some souls go through life without a thought for God. In their case, the way unto him is through a U-turn and penance. Others seem to follow the grace of baptism and cling on more or less to their innocence. One thinks of the privilege that, for instance, children born with some kind of defect, Down syndrome or whatever it might be, who do not lose their innocence and presumably will be judged accordingly. Each one lives within his own parameters and there are huge advantages in being protected against contamination and corruption. With regard to those who go a wrong way away from God, they can come back with a vengeance and make up for lost time. There are many spectacular cases of such conversions. But there are many, unfortunately, who just put God on a back burner and never really handle him, and moreover do push him away when he tries to come to them. In the play, The Damnation of Faust, there is one scene where Dr. Faust has given his life already in early life to the demon and the demon is coming for his pound of flesh. It hit me actually this morning for at the altar by accident after giving Holy Communion to the people I did not consume what remained in the chalice before putting the ablution in it and therefore I had a little doubt is this valid? Of course this came to me afterwards in prayer. Just think one small drop of this precious blood will be enough to redeem the whole world. That is actually what comes out of the lips of this dying Dr. Faust. He is trying to grapple with the fact that he's lost it and he's seeing the precious blood before him and if he comes back he can receive pardon. But in the play he doesn't come back and cries are heard after his death. Be that as it may, what happened this morning helped me to realize what happened, actually happened in many celebrations under duress in prisoner of war camps when they had a tiny, tiny bit of wine that they could consecrate. And so the precious blood received before giving Holy Communion by intention to the people was sufficient because that was received. Basically, this blood is there. It's there for the claiming, the taking. And how many go when they could have access to it into modes of absence? But I return to where I started. The innocent who goes through life, they are a treasure for mankind. And there is a danger now that their number can be reduced or even eliminated by selective abortion. It's fairly recent in time when suddenly I was called to the departed by then soul of a little one not far from here. Some years ago her sister who was far more handicapped actually, little Noreen, had gone into the beyond and I had prepared her as one could and she had gone through her little life without eyes. But her other sister, Rose, of whom we think on this day of Rose of Lima, Rosemary was her full name, she had a rapport with her and it would seem that 
she knew things in her innocence. For instance, the daddy, wherever he was in heaven, had lost his belly. And Noreen, her blind and handicapped sister, now had eyes. So there are surprises in these little hidden souls the world would never admire or see. And who knows? The first may well indeed be last, and the last first. The saint of this day, Rose, was very beautiful physically, but she refused all her suitors and gave herself very early in life to the Lord, becoming a Dominican tertiary. And she, because of the parents' difficulty and penury in life, had helped to work the garden. But then she began to live in a shack on the garden as a hermit, even a recluse. And there she was doing extreme penance. The Lord gave her gifts, and these had to be examined by competent priests who unanimously agreed they were authentic. And so that garden became actually the centre of Lima, and she now is being feasted throughout Latin America, a hidden saint. The inner life was more important, the beauty of the soul, than that of the beauty of the physique which could have attracted men for a while. And so it is, there's a hidden beauty. And many of the flowers of the garden of the Lord are seen in their beauty by him alone. The limelight can actually be contaminating with regard to interior beauty. There is a safety in hiddenness and obscurity. It is enough that the Lord see us. Rose. Oh, little child that never shall grow old or wither in his field. Oh, hidden rose plucked out of time. My story never told will now be heard there where each aeon goes into the hours unknown. And he knows well the pain that was thy lot, thy simple part, the portion that by his choice to thee fell. For he saw not thy mind, but this thy heart. O oh, little child, all wild with loving strong, and clinging of high squeeze. Fly, fly with ease to where all angels fly, where they belong, where little hearts, their maker, often please. More than the wise of earth, whose worth is loud, far louder than a little cherub's shroud.